In this lesson, we're going to breeze through some keyword research for SEO. Now, the cool thing I think about this lesson is this is a totally beginner friendly, your complete noob to SEO type of approach and will absolutely suit even the most veteran SEO bloggers, period. <laughs> I still use, I still do for all my sites that I create exactly what I'm about to show you. I do. Today, I've ran 75 plus websites over 13 years now. I've produced 2,500 blog posts. This is the exact keyword research process I do, and it's the beginner one. That's it. I don't use Ahrefs anymore, which is a super expensive um, tool. I used to use it. I don't anymore. You can use this. You can use free or very cheap tools. I'll show you how to do all that stuff. I'm just letting you know. This is good news, right? So here's my process in a nutshell. Come up with your seed keywords. Lots of people call it this. It's not just me. I didn't make up any of this, by the way. Come up with your seed keywords, type them into Google and or other SEO tools like Low Fruits or SE Ranking is currently what I'm uh, playing with. I'm actually enjoying it quite a lot. Search response, answer the public, a lot of different tools. And then you get the ideas, the keyword ideas, once you start typing them in. Oh, and using modifier words. Type them into Google or your tool using modifier words. And I have a bunch of them down here to choose from get the ideas and then analyze them. More specifically, looking at difficulty versus opportunity. We'll talk about that in a second. And then write them down and organize them and then choose, choose them for your content plan. That's it. Okay, now let's dive into that one by one. What do I mean by seed keywords? Think of it like a plant. You're going to plant these seed keywords into Google and then see what blossoms, right? So for the fountain pen niche I have, I literally did this last night without using tools, by the way. Fountain pen cleaning, fountain pen maintenance, fountain pen ink, fountain pen paper. I could keep going. You could get like three to 10. And these might just be your subtopics if you already have those in mind or just words that deal with your niche specifically. Fountain pen ink, that's a good one. Those are your seed keywords. What you're gonna do is you're gonna type those into Google, type those into Ahrefs, type those into Low Fruits or whatever tool you're gonna use and combine them with some modifier keywords to see what keyword ideas pop up. So I highly recommend before you go to the tools and I'll, I'll show you some tools in action in just a minute, but before you do that, I highly, highly, highly recommend brainstorming first before using tools, start with questions. They're generally the easiest um, to just kind of do in your mind. So I literally brainstormed these last night. I was sitting on the couch. I was watching a movie. And I was like, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna come up with some ideas based on these. So the questions modifiers are who, what, when, where, why, and how, right? Who, what, when, where, why, and how. And I, I went through each one of these fountain pen cleaning and I kind of came up with stuff on my own. And here's what I got, how. How to clean a fountain pen, how to maintain a fountain pen, how to refill fountain pen ink, how to clean up fountain pen ink. How often should you clean a fountain pen? That's just like five that I did in like literally 90 seconds. I was just like brainstorming, like jotting the stuff out. And then I moved on to what, all right? What do you need to clean a fountain pen? What kind of paper works best for fountain pens? What's the difference between a fountain pen and a ballpoint pen? And you could probably do what's the difference between a fountain pen and a rollerball pen, a calligraphy pen. There's like three or four different posts, possibly. I don't know. What kind of ink do you use? And then I moved on to can. Can you clean a fountain pen with water? Can you use regular paper with a fountain pen? Can you take fountain pens on an airplane? So on and so forth. So you would do this theoretically before using tools as much as you can just to get a bunch of ideas right off the bat before you start analyzing them with SEO tools. And before I actually show these in action, I will uh, just briefly run down. There's a lot more like modifier words than these. These are just kind of the, my go-tos. I just had a list somewhere. I don't actually remember what I did with it. Um, there's like a bunch of keywords that I came up with, what I'm about to do. Um, these are just to get you started. If you have more modifier words, absolutely go for it. Fast, slow, big, now, vintage, proven, modern. Vintage fountain pens is definitely a thing. Best, worst, what are the best fountain pens? The best fountain pen inks, the best fountain pen paper. <laughs> best fountain pen cleaning tools. Like there's a million things. Um, good, bad. What are some bad fountain pens? That might actually be a keyword. I don't know. Uh, bad ways to clean a fountain pen. I don't know if bad's a very good one right there or not, but 
small fountain pens. What's the best small fountain pen? I just combine that best and small, big, fast, slow, up, down, long, short, far, near me. Like you could just plug these things in and just see what happens. Even if you can't think of any right off the top of your head, like let's go with long. I can't think of anything, fountain pens and long at the moment, but let's move on to the tools. I couldn't uh, brainstorm long, so let's let's give this a try. Um, one thing I like to do that works for SEO tools specifically. This works for SE ranking, Hrefs, SEMrush, um, Low Fruits, which is what I actually use these days because I love it. Basically, you use the include function. So I have a thousand keywords here. This is for Fountain Pen Ink. That was my seed keyword. I typed in my seed keyword, and it brought back like a thousand different ideas right here. So what I want to do now is use the include function. And again, most SEO tools have this in their keyword thing. In fact, I'm actually just going to like gonna copy this fountain pen ink. Let's go over here, type that into SE ranking. All right. So my keywords, where are my keywords? I'm going to move my thing over here. Keyword ideas. There we go. View detailed report. 800 of them right here. So somewhere in here is a uh, filter. There it is. Filter where I can include certain words like what was the long this is a really weird one for fountain pens i don't think we're actually gonna get anything with this one uh no nothing yet i don't think there's gonna be anything oh, like how can the questions are generally way, way easier i'm actually just gonna try long again just for the fun of it include any word let's go with long how long should you soak a fountain pen well there you go Look at Low Fruits coming through. Nice job, Low Fruits. How long does pen ink last? Okay, so these are actually some really good keyword ideas. These are really good. I'm actually going to click and analyze these um, for our discussion here in a second. I'm just going to analyze, analyze. Why is it hiding them? Not sure. Hang on one second. Okay, so I was totally pressing the wrong button to analyze. I was accidentally hiding them. My bad. Anyways, I'm actually just going to analyze these in Low Fruits for just a second. But my point is, seed keywords using a modifier like who, what, when, where, why, long, near me, cheap, expensive deal, and just to get ideas. And once you have ideas, we're going to skip ahead just a second, uh, jot them down in a list. So if you have the paid version of this course, I'm going to include a link to my template right here for keyword research and also like site planning and that sort of stuff. So you can just download this. But honestly, even the free version of this course, you can just make your own spreadsheet. Just jot down the ideas, make a list, right? And then after you do this, you can plug these into tools. Um, oh, let me, before I talk about analysis, one more thing. You can also use searchresponse.io or answer the public as a really popular free one. Let's do fountain pen ink here. Fountain pen ink. What this does is basically get you a lot of questions that people are asking and typing into Google and searching. It's going to take a few minutes to learn. Another one is keyword sheeter. Keyword it used to be the uh, the bad word there, but it's now keyword sheeter. You can type this in, fountain pen ink. And basically this gives you a list of like auto populate sort of things. When you go to Google and you start typing in fountain pen ink, it's going to give you pen ink, all this stuff. And these are what people are searching for. Fountain pen ink near me. There's another near me thing that you could write about. Keyword sheeter just kind of generates them all at once. And you can actually export this to a spreadsheet. There's a bajillion of them. <laughs> it works really fast. I like that. Fountain pen ink dry. Fountain pen ink for black paper, for drawing. There's a lot of different ideas here. Basically, I would copy and paste like all of these. Or I would go through one by one and just make a list of the ones that I like. Once I have all this stuff from Answer the Public, from Keyword Sheeter, from Low Fruits, or whatever it is, at that point, I'm going to analyze them. And remember, again, we talked about this in the last video, but this whole thing kind of happens back and forth. As I find more keywords and analyze them, I find more keywords and analyze them. Like it just, it's a continuous cycle of finding keywords, analyzing them, also finding competitor sites that you can look at and then making more keyword uh, choices here. All right, so then you'll analyze. Now here's, here, here's how to analyze keywords for SEO. Two things, difficulty and opportunity. Difficulty is pretty straightforward. How competitive is this keyword? Am I gonna be competing against sites like the New York Times? Or do I find low quality sites on page one? I'll show you how to do that in just a second. And number two, opportunity. Even if I rank for this, like let's say I'm rank one in Google, am I gonna get traffic? 
Now, a big part of that is search volume. How many people are searching for this keyword? Is it literally 10 people a month or is it 10,000 people a month? If you rank one, what is it going to bring your business? What is it going to bring your blog? Difficulty and opportunity. And oftentimes, of course, these are like a very indirect relationship. One goes down, the other goes up, but not necessarily. So let's talk about difficulty and then we'll talk about opportunity. Difficulty. Stop relying on any difficulty score. In SE Ranking does this, and of course, Hrefs has a keyword difficulty score. It's almost meaningless. It's very close to meaningless. Don't rely on those. There's a much better way, and that is to look at what is actually already ranking in real time. Google the keyword. In our case, let's choose one of these. Um, how long does a fountain pen ink cartridge last? How long will fountain pen ink last on paper? Pen ink last. I don't know. All these are kind of cool. How long does ink last in a fountain pen? That's a good one. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to look at the search results, what's actually ranking, and I'm going to check the DR or DA. DR is the Ahrefs metric for how authoritative a site is. And then DA is domain authority, which is Moz's metric. How authoritative is a site? So I'm going to go to Google. I'm going to type in my query. I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to look at what is ranking. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do this. Number one is the free Mozbar Chrome extension. You can sign up right now to search Mozbar. I'm going to refresh my page here. Wait, is this working or not? Where's my Mozbar? Oh, there it is. Mozbar. And basically what this will show you in search results is the DA. DA15, DA46, DA13, DA43. That's the top five results. DA basically just means how authoritative is this website. So I'll tell you right now, this is a bigger website. It's a DA46 website. Probably has a bunch of backlinks. Looks like it does even to this page. This other site, which is outranking it, it's performing better in search, is a DA15 site. That's good news. That means this is a low competition keyword. That's difficulty. This wouldn't be that difficult to rank for, even for a brand new site. Pennyfeather.com. I don't know what this is exactly. You can also open it up if it doesn't show. And this is DA26. Okay, so not bad. That's a that's a pretty small score still. So let's compare that to a bigger keyword just for fun. Let's go with best fountain pens. Okay, so T3 is number one. And I don't know why it's not showing me the DA right underneath that, but I can tell it is DA. Come on. Come on. Ugh, let's fail. Moz bars fail. All right, it's not showing me very much. Doesn't matter. Um, DA35, DA86. That's probably one of these. That's probably the one at the top. T3 is probably 83. I don't know why it's showing down there. DA75, 76, 49. These are much bigger sites, more authoritative sites. The New York Times would be like a DA98 or something like that, like ridiculously high. Way more competitive. That is how I judge if a keyword is difficult or not. And one more thing here. Look for other low quality. I'm putting that in air quotes. doesn't mean the site's actually low quality. It just means Google doesn't see it as authoritative. More low quality sites, low DA. We, are, we just looked at that. Or forum post or Quora or Reddit on page one. This is why I like using low fruits because this is exactly what it's showing me. This keyword, wait, which one do we do? This one right here. This keyword, how long does ink last in a fountain pen? This is the top 10 results of Google. It's showing me in this tool, Low Fruits. That's why I love Low Fruits. DA10, DA13, Reddit's on page one and rank five. Quora's rank seven. And then a forum post and then a DA7 site. So this is a very opportunistic keyword right here. This is not difficult. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six out of the top 10 posts in Google are quote unquote low quality sites. It's pretty opportunistic, I would say. That's not very difficult. So that is a much better way to judge difficulty on keywords. If you see those low quality pages on page one of Google, that's a good sign that a newer site could rank. Those are less competitive keywords. And of course it's not competitive or not competitive. It's a range, right? Like it's zero to 100 competitiveness. It's, it's up to you to judge what you want to gun for, uh, which keywords you want to target and which you don't, but that is how to assess difficulty. Now, of course, that's not the only thing you should look at. You need to look at opportunities, right? Some of these low volume keywords, like you can see the monthly search volume estimate right here. It's not set in stone. It's just an estimate. They're very low. 
They're not 10,000 searches a month. They're 10 searches a month. Now, a few things before I get started. Do not rely, should be rely, not reply. Do not rely on these SEO tools, accurate estimates. At this point, I actually want to turn on something called Keywords Everywhere. It is a, it's not free anymore. It used to be free. It's a very cheap keyword tool where you can go to Google and search for things. Where was that other search that we had? Oh, here we go. Uh, I'm going to refresh this page and you'll see the keyword estimates here. The search volume estimates, 18,000 uh, for fountain pen ink. This one is 20 a month. That's what it's guessing. It's not accurate. I want to like underscore this. Sometimes they're accurate. Sometimes they're not. It might be a, a relative thing. It might not be. I literally rank for keywords to get thousands of page views a month, not searches, but page views. They might get even more searches per month that these tools say gets zero searches a month. I have pages on my site, multiple pages on my site. They get thousands of visits per month that the SEO tools said would get zero visits per month. I'm just saying, like, it's not the be all end all. Don't trust it. But you still need to kind of assess like monthly search volume. Are people searching for this? Even if the tools are like, mm, they may, may or may not be wrong. What do you think? What are your gut instincts? I know that's a frustrating thing to hear in a course, but what are your gut instincts? What is the monthly search volume in your head? What do you think? Are people actually searching for this or not? So for example, like this keyword right here, I would totally write. It says 20. I don't care. I would still write that. How long does ink last in a fountain pen? And one more really important thing to remember is that this says 20, but that's literally just this one keyword. And if you remember from earlier in this course, each article will rank for hundreds and thousands of keywords, potentially, right? So you're going to rank for a lot of other keywords that are very, very similar to this one right here. So it's actually way more than just 20 people searching when you add up all these hundreds of keywords that you're going to be ranking for. There you go. All right, last thing, um, the likelihood of getting traffic. We talked a little bit about this in one of the first lessons, but looking at that search result page, is Google sending traffic to blogs? Are there video results? Are there featured snippets? What's the user intent? Um, this is another thing you have to do when you're analyzing keywords. If I rank number one in Google, will I get traffic from this? Yes or no? Part of it is monthly search volume. The other part of it is just, what is Google showing? Let's go back to this one right here. This is a good sign. So a featured snippet to me is almost always a good sign because this is linked up here. If I click this, it'll actually, well, no, I thought it took me to the site. I'm wrong. It doesn't matter. The point is there's lots of blog content right here. I'm showing some people also ask, which is more good keywords to look into, by the way. And absolutely, oh, there are a few videos on page one, but they're like way down at the bottom. There might be other queries, other keywords that show video, 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 video. Anything to do with like sound or um, video, like in the keyword itself is almost always gonna bring up YouTube stuff. And it's probably not gonna give you any traffic. Just letting you know. So that my friends is how to analyze keywords for SEO. Last part, once you find a keyword, what do you do? Okay, I think I got an idea. Well, put it down in your spreadsheet. Use the template if you have access to it. If not, just create a template like this. I recommend categorizing them as you go, and then there's no right answer here. The next step is to produce them. That's it. Choose, this is for new sites only, new sites only. Choose like 30 keywords, maybe like 10 across three different categories or something like that. Use, just use your instincts here and put them on your content plan. Put them on the to-do list. Put them on the calendar. Next up, we're going to be talking about how to do research for SEO. This is one of the bonus videos. And then more importantly, how to produce content that will rank. It's a big topic.